All right, everybody, welcome back. As of earlier this week, Gaijin finally made the Baz Meshu Par, which I'm probably hardly mispronouncing, so my Israeli fans, please forgive me, up to spec for top tier. This was a long time coming. It took them about a patch and a half after the addition of these new F-15s for them to fix it. And we'll get into what exactly changed here in just one second. What if I told you you could earn free Golden Eagles for that next vehicle stock grinder event? That's right. Free Golden Eagles for War Thunder can help. Using the app, you can earn Golden Eagles for easy tasks such as surveys or games or even just inviting your friends. Use my referral code 7KVGK to get an extra free 10 Golden Eagles from the start. So what are you waiting for? Download the app in the description below and start earning Golden Eagles today. So what exactly changed that to bring it back up to spec and what was wrong with it in the first place? Well, it's very simple. It was missing TWS and data link. Now this probably comes as a surprise to a lot of people because on the dev server, this thing had the exact same radar, which is the ANAPG 63V1 as the US F-15C and the F-15JM. Now that was wrong and Gaijin correctly went ahead and fixed it to the ANAPG 63 PSP. And let me give you all a little bit of backstory on these radars. I did a lot of digging when I was making my F-15 video, so I have a pretty good timeline of what exactly was going on with all these radars. So our F-15C in-game isn't a true MSIP-2. So the MSIP-2 was actually originally done in around 1983, 1984, and the correct radar, if we got a pure MSIP-2, would be the same radar as what the Baz Meshupar has, the ANAPG 63 PSP. That is also what the F-15A and the F-15J have in game. The only thing that has the original ANAPG 63 now is the first F-15A in the Israeli tree, which is called Baz for most people. For the US F-15s, there's not much documentation and the upgrade path of the radars was very convoluted, which is why you get so much confusion. But that PSP radar was the standard in F-15Cs from 1984 until the year 2000. Keep that fact in mind because it could become important really quickly, but there were a few F-15Cs that got the ANAPG-70, which is the Strike Eagle radar, about 40-ish or so of the last ones that came off the production line. So not every F-15C had the PSP, but almost all of them did. Now, in October of 2000, the first ESA radar, which is the ANAPG 63V2, was installed on the F-15. And the next year, in March of 2001, is when we see the ANAPG 63V1 installed on US F-15Cs. The Baz Meshupar is a 90s upgrade for the F-15C, so obviously it couldn't get that V1 radar, but it wasn't that big of a deal because it's supposed to have both AMRAM capability and TWS. Well, Gaijin for some reason absolutely insisted that the PSP radar did not have TWS and wasn't upgraded. Or in their words, in the bug report that I actually made, true TWS, and they claimed that it only became available on the ANAPG-70 and the ANAPG-63V1. Which means that Gaijin thought that the US F-15Cs, at least the majority of the fleet, did not have TWS until the year 2000 or 2001. And they instead gave us RAM mode or RAID assessment mode, which is essentially very fast, incredibly narrow TWS, which means they could only really fire at one target. They also neglected to give a data link, so your plane couldn't talk to the missiles once they were off the rail. This both meant they didn't get any kind of range updates on where exactly your missile was in relation to your target. It also meant, as far as I'm aware, that unless you were guiding it in you know, STT or single target track mode, it would not get any kind of updates on positioning. You would just have to fire it and hope that it would pick up guidance. Essentially, what this meant was that unlike the US and Japanese F-15s, which could volley fire multiple AMRAMs at once and was a big advantage at top tier, instead you would have to engage targets one by one. Now, was it still better than something like the J-11A? Yes, but it was easily the worst of the top tier F-15s. It was just sad, honestly. So finally, after multiple bug reports, guys went ahead and gave the Boss Meshu Par TWS. Now, they still absolutely refuse to give the F-15A or J TWS, which, by the way, I have no idea why, because TWS with Sparrows would be like, whatever. And they instead took the time and effort to copy and paste a new version of the ANAPG 63 V1 and then rename it to ANAPG 63 PSP IBOS. Instead of just, you know, adding the TWS section to the PSP radar. 
this leaves Israel in a very healthy spot for top two air because, you know, they both got that brand new F-16C this update, which while it does have weaker flight performance than the American Block 50 at the same VR, it gets double the amount of countermeasures and you get your choice of more agile derbies or the overall better AMRAM. Their other choice, the Baz Meshupar, is now equal to the F-15C and, well, the F-15C is the second best jet in the game, coming in only behind, you guessed it, the F-15JM, which is just flat out better at the same VR. I do want to take this chance to clear up a spot of confusion on the Baz Meshupar because I've seen a lot of people, you know, on the forums and my comments and elsewhere saying that the Baz Meshupar is now better than the American F-15C because it has quote unquote the old flight model. No shame to those who are saying this, I completely understand where you're coming from because Gaijin in their infinite wisdom copy and pasted the stat card. And no, they didn't copy and paste it from, you know, the F-15C, they copy and pasted it from the F-15A. This is a great teaching example. Stat cards lie, constantly. Not just for planes too, missile stat cards lie as well. Like a great example of this is the max G load of a missile. So first of all, we all know that just because something has a max G load of 30 or 40 Gs doesn't actually mean it can hit 30 or 40 Gs because it depends on you know, the fin AOA and a bunch of other stuff like that. So they can set a higher G load on a missile and not actually change the fin stuff. And so it will never actually be more agile even though they change the quote unquote G limit on it. And that's assuming they actually change the G limit because by the way, the G load on the stat card is a separate value than the actual G load of the missile in the files. Because why would you go ahead and just use the same value for both? You know, have it fill from that. It's the same thing with plain stat cards. All those values like the top speed, the turn time, everything else are all being typed in by someone at the other end, not actually connected to the real values. When I used the bot to compare the flight models to each other, it found no differences. And when I also checked the thrust to weight graphs, there were once again, no differences. The only difference between the Israeli and American F-15s is that the Israeli one carries less bombs, which, if you ask me, makes it better than the American one, but doesn't actually change its capability, like, at all, at least for air-to-air. -air. And that's totally fine. You still get the same plane with a much shorter grind than you would find in the US tree, and potentially much better missiles in the future, depending on what exactly Gaijin decides to do with both. The Python 4 is in the files, and this thing did use it along with the Python 5, but I highly doubt they get back to this. In any case, I hope you enjoyed the video. Like I've been saying, if you enjoyed this, go ahead and smash that subscribe button if you aren't already. Hit that like button, and I'll catch y'all next time. So, peace, y'all.